Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. What are genes? Genes are nothing but the units of inheritance. However, Mendel called these genes as factors that time. Later on, the term gene was used. So they are like units of inheritance. So they are basically that component which carry the information required to inherit the trait from one generation to next. They control the traits of living organism, of course. So every living organism is made up of cells. So there are a lot of cells inside our body. Inside each cell, you have a nucleus. Now, if you magnify this nucleus, you will get to see a structure like this where you have chromatin threads all around and these chromatin threads condense together to form a structure called chromosome. So this structure is a chromosome and on this chromosome you have several genes. Now the number of chromosome present inside a cell in a particular organism is constant. For example in human beings the total number of chromosomes in each cell is going to be 46. But on each chromosome you have thousands of genes because if you see the number of traits which we have, there are so many. Eye color, eye shape, hair color, uh, the facial features, the, the shape of your palm, the shape of your finger. There are so many traits you actually have. So you actually need a lot of genes. And that is why on each chromosome you have almost thousands of genes. And each gene is for a particular uh, trait of your body. Now the question is how exactly these genes control the traits or the characteristics in a living organism. Now if you look at the composition of each of these genes, now the gene in turn is composed of DNA. So we have already spoken about nucleic acids, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid that is DNA and RNA. So in most of the organisms except viruses where RNA is the genetic material, but everywhere else it is DNA that is the double stranded nucleic acid. This is how it looks like. Now this DNA has sequence of bases for example something like this. So you actually have some sequence between the bases like this. We have studied about the structure of the DNA right in our previous class. So I am not getting into the detail of DNA structure right now but this just for your information the each DNA will have some sequence of this um, basis and this DNA sequence will instruct the cells to produce or to synthesize particular type of proteins. So this will actually give signals for protein synthesis and if this sequence also will tell what kind of proteins need to be synthesized and these proteins in turn will actually determine the traits. Now structure of a protein determines its function. You remember if you look at the tertiary structures of a protein. So protein structure has a lot to do with its function. Let us suppose if there is there are some changes in the proteins which are involved in growth and development of an organism. So if the structure of those proteins gets changed what will happen? There can be a change in the physical feature of that organism like height because height is something which is related to growth. Right? So if the growth is less, the height will be less, so the organism will be short. Correct? So your proteins actually govern all the traits of your body. The function of the protein actually governs everything which we see on our body. The physical appearance, everything is controlled by the proteins. And the protein synthesis is controlled by the sequence of the bases on the DNA. And the DNA is present in the, within the gene. Right? So maybe the sequence of proteins up to a certain, I mean the sequence of bases, let us suppose in this region, this will code for proteins which are responsible for, let us say, eye color, right? So the sequence of bases in this region will determine what will be the color of the eye. Similarly, maybe the sequence of proteins, in the sequence of bases in this region will determine, will cause protein synthesis which in turn is responsible for hair color. So, a particular region of the DNA, a particular section of the DNA will determine a particular trait. So this is how genes control the traits of living organism. So now let us talk about alleles. We all, I have already introduced you to alleles. We already know what are alleles. But still just to get a better idea so that you don't have any further confusion. So alleles are slightly different forms of the same gene. As I said, one pair of allele forms a gene. So one gene will have 
two copies one copy inherited from father one copy inherited from mother and each copy is known as an allele so they are why are they slightly different form because both both the alleles will represent the same type of gene for example if this is i color let us say capital b small b okay these are the two alleles and they together form a gene now both now both of them represent the eye color so this is also for eye color and this one is also for eye color so both of them represent eye color but they are slightly different form in the sense that this depicts a black eye color whereas this allele depicts a blue eye color so that means even though they represent they uh, indicate the same type of gene but their forms might be slightly different so these two alleles together form a gene and that gene codes for which trait for the eye color so alleles are slightly different forms of the same gene they code for a pair of contrasting traits now it is not always necessary that the alleles have to be different they can be same as well for example maybe there can be an individual who has capital b capital b so from mother also he has inherited black eye color from father also he has inherited black eye color so that is also possible so the two alleles in the same gene can be same the two alleles in the same gene can be different right but every gene will have two alleles that is for sure because it is sexual reproduction so two parents are involved so for every gene they will have one copy from father and one copy from mother please understand these basics because if you do not understand the concept of gene allele and all these small small things you will not be able to understand genetics okay so let us now take the example of the pea plant so the plant which we were talking about here you can see this is a tall plant right now the capital t denotes tall and small t denotes dwarf now a tall plant can be represented as capital t capital t so this gene can be represented as capital t capital t so it has received tall character from both the parents it can also be represented as capital t small t because when capital t and small t are together capital t gets expressed so it can also be represented as capital t and small t because both of them denote the same trait that is height so these are called alleles of each other so t and t are alleles of each other similarly t and t are alleles of each other if you talk about a dwarf plant you can represent it like this and these both are alleles of each other so an, an organism inherits two alleles for each gene every gene will have two alleles one allele from the paternal, paternal side one allele from maternal side so it is something like this so let us suppose this is mother and this is father so when i say mother and father i am using these words because it makes you easy to understand because for human beings it is like one mother and one father they are sexually reproduced to form an offspring in case of plants also you need two plants right but even if you self pollinate when you say self pollinate you are actually pollinating the mother and the father are going to be the same right but still you need two organisms correct okay so if this is mother and this is father so let us suppose mother contributed capital t father contributed capital t so the offspring will have capital t capital t similarly if mother contributes small t father contributes small t they both will combine to form small t small t so this will be the offspring so this is the concept of allele now very much related to allele we will now Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.